A lot of you know who find supporters of the co-op. This is a real time of change for us at the co-op and a real time of possibility. So uh, the possibilitarian sort of concept has been fortifying us as of late. So we have that um, woodcut exhibit in, in the lobby, but I'm also looking for some other locations to tour some of these exhibitions. We've been doing these um, giant woodcut banner and giant painting exhibits. Um, well, Peter's been doing it for 50 years. For the last 33, I've just been chipping in. And now for the last two, we've really been touring these works all around a drivable distance around Vermont. So when um, we uh, can work it out, we usually have a performance or an event with each show. And we are very excited to have um, also, Javi and Polash here, they'll be coming up in a moment and they're preparing their instruments. They'll be doing the second half of the evening after Peter Schumann's fiddle lecture. So, um, and then Maria Schumann will be arriving as soon as she finishes the sheet chores and she will help us end the evening with a ceremonial harvest, cannabis blessing and dance and some songs from other um, places from around the world. So without further ado, let's welcome Peter Schumann. This is not a fiddle lecture, but it's a fiddle round. <laughs> it's rounding. And the exhibit is not related to it. This exhibit is called uh, Existability. I sort of made up that word, but I didn't because I looked it up in the Oxford English Dictionary and it exists. <laughs> it means, you know, it's an existing word. It means capability of existing. And this is a little older.
British nursery rhyme goes like this. For every evil under the sun, there is a remedy or there is none. If there be one, go and find it. If there be none, never mind it. <laughs> But 
of clients, of macro and micro sisters and brothers who all need each other and all feed from the same source.
leaving behind this search for freedom, they lay their heart at the feet of true devotion. And that is how pure love is able to rise. With the joyous blessing of our masters. So, with all your mind and heart, do this practice of pure love. Practice unconditional love. If you miss this chance, it won't come again. Fakib Lalan, the poet, the beggar, says that you will be trapped in 100,000 endless desires.
Parvati and her partner came to Bread and Puppet and spent a summer and then another several months with Bread and Puppet in Germany. And Pavi, who was at Bread and Puppet, maybe what, 10 years ago for the first time? And then this fall, Pavi and Polash have been on <coughs> our farm with me and Josh working really, really hard, harvesting apples and milking sheep and moving sheep and harvesting hemp. And so we wanted to uh, invite you to join us for a few songs, harvesting and fall songs. And um, do you want to teach the first one? Yes. <laughs> yes, wonderful. So we have two songs that are both about ganja harvesting. Do you want us to share one song which comes from India and Bangladesh? And it's a time of year uh, when one ritual happens, which is called Choro. Paulus, will you tell about it? Like so many cultures and even our mainstream cultures, we have celebrating New Year. So we celebrate New Year. So our Bengali New Year thing basically based on business matters. They invite everyone to their shop to pay all the dues, and by that they pay them sweets. So all the lower castes and lower class they reject it. They don't celebrate for New Year. They celebrate the last day of the year, and that day there will be one priest, one sadhu, who will dedicate himself for one year meditating to reach one stage that he can invite Shiva in him. Because all other gods are dried skin, and they don't understand the pain of poor. So only the dark skin Shiva understands the pain of poor. And to make him happy, there is only one thing. You don't need so many things. You need only Ganja and invite him. So they call Shiva to come at the last day of the year to take all the pains they are carrying through the year that they can start a new year without having any pain or anything. So they sounds like this, right? So, and in this ritual the sadhu is hanging from a hook oh. of metal. There's he will be hooked from back through his skin and there will be no blood and no pain. And he swings from the center of the the yeah, like a merry-go-round kind of thing? All around. Yeah. And he flies like this, blessing of He represents all the, the form of the sheep who is taking all the pains happily. Because they believe that because upper class will never understand them. So they don't want to bother them. They want to celebrate by themselves like this way. So we ask us to join, ask you to join us. And however many people would like to, but to stand and to be together, maybe in some kind of circle. We don't all have to stand also, but wherever you are, have a
Thank <laughs> you. 